this is Joy Boy P. In today's video is um, on the Logitech G19S and more specifically some uh, three free applets um, for it. So here as you can see I've just got the ordinary clock up. Um, now I will be showing you how to install the disco light feature and Skype on it which is via the software foulnet.de um, it is German software um, also you've got action gameplay um, recorder um, software this shows you your um, frame rate and also shows you whether or not you're recording so if I hit F9 it's now recording on my desktop see it there and um, it also gives you a time of how long you've been recording for and that good for gameplay sessions and so on it also shows you there how much space is left on um, the drive which you're recording to um, and then last but not least and to me more, probably one of the most useful ones is MSI Afterburner, um, some software where you can keep an eye on your temperatures of your graphics card, even your CPU, its usage, and so on and so forth. Um, now, what is displayed on the screen is adjustable. This is just what I prefer to have um, on show when I'm testing um, cards and so on. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, switch over to my recording so uh, to my the video shadow play and I'll show you how to install these softwares. Right, um, as I said I'm recording with NVIDIA shadow play here so um, just pop that away for a moment. Now it's worth mentioning that I actually found these softwares, um, well two of these softwares by accident. So if I bring up me MSI Afterburner, go right here. Now what you basically see on the screen is this but it's, um, what you want to see out of it here you've just got everything including all your CPU cores and hyper threads and so on and so forth. Um, so if I, oops, sorry, my mouse is a bit buggy at the moment. Um, so to get the Logitech, um, Logitech, um, to get the MSI Afterburner working on your keyboard, you need to go into your settings, and then go into monitoring. Like I said, I found this by accident. I noticed here showing Logitech keyboard LCD display, and here it um, says in LCD in LCD. So if you say click on memory clock here, um, that will sh um, show you what um, in this bit here whether or not it's visible. Now, if you actually select it like that, you see there it's not ticked. If you tick it, um, it's shown as a graph, or you can sh it can be um, shown in fonts and that. But I prefer seeing it in a graph. Um, then you just click OK, and it will be visible on the keyboard. Um, no, I'll show you that one again in a moment. So you do have to select exactly which ones you want shown. So you see there I've got temp, uh, you know, power temperature, usage for the um, core clock, now memory clock as well, um, memory usage, and just to keep an eye on my te uh, uh, CPU temperature, I've just got the temperature of like the first hyper thread co uh, core and its usage. Um, so it's just a, as a general, keep an eye on that. Um, so yeah, you just literally click OK and then it is uh, enabled on the keyboard. Like I said, I found this one by accident, so um, close that one. And again with this one, um, it's Action Gameplay um, gameplay Recorder or DVR. Um, this one you get from Steam and I actually found this one on the keyboard by accident as I was switching between softwares on my keyboard and I noticed it there so all you need to do is just install that and it will be enabled uh, straight away um, this software does cost um, £30 actually um, so it's not exactly free but you can get this software as a demo and you can record with it for, um, for free and I'm not sure whether or not it um, enables the uh, keyboard's uh, um, little applet as well so close that one and then uh, last but not least is the Foulnet um, software. Uh, it's got the Colour Factory and Skype. Um, first of all, I'm going to uninstall this one and then show you what it's and show you how exactly it's install it. So I'll be back in a moment. So for the um, Foulnet um, disco keyboard and Skype, then you just need to tap in Foulnet on uh, um, Google. Sorry. And it's the first one, falnet.de forward slash en, which is the English part of the site. And then you just click here, to, uh, download, and you see it starts downloading. 
and the demo is completed already. That's actually faster than expected, so you just install as you usually do with software. You should probably read that bit. Already exists, so oh, great. Uh, sometimes uh, you can have issues um, installing this one. When I first tried to uh, record this uh, video back in January, uh, great. Um, it wouldn't actually launch. Yes, we try. Right, I'll be back in a moment. Right, sorry, I forgot to close the instance of uh, FileNet, even though I un uninstalled it. So, uh, it's like a funny thing. So, um, launch FileNet um, software. So we launch that. Let's close Google for a moment. So it'll uh, start up minimizing the corner usually. Uh, uh, don't seem to be having much luck today. It doesn't usually freeze up this program. Right, sorry there, people. Um, just a little side note: when you if you decide to uninstall the um, FileNet software, you will need to go and actually um, into use um, C for, um, C drive. Then, if you run a 60 bit uh, a 64 bit um, version of Windows, um, it'll be in this folder, or a 32 bit, it'll be in this folder. And then you'll have to go and delete the FileNet folder because it's still when you uninstall it, it still leaves that there with a lot of stuff in it, and that'll cause it to crash if you reinstall it again. So um, there's just a little side side note for you there. Um, so now that I've reinstalled it again, let's actually get it working. Go away, C cleaner. Um, sorry, wrong software. Right, so here you see installed plugins. There's nothing there. Um, you go to install plugins these are the um, different plugins which you can get for it the only two which I use is the color factory which is um, has the disco feature for the keyboard and whoops and uh, Skype so I should change the order in which they're in and so all you need to do is click install now and just wait for that to do its thing And that's that one actually finished and installed. Come on, go away, Skype. Don't want you now. Actually, no, I might want you. So, um, and in your Skype, when you enable it, um, it will show you FileNet G19. Now, once uh, to use Skype, just allow access. And then close that back down. So, see there now you have Skype in installed. And then the other one which I use called Factory, like I said, I don't use the other ones, but the Pro and the DEV uh, ones, um, you need to, you do need to purchase the software, I believe, um, to actually install those. Although I'm not entirely um, sure when it comes to the Pro one, judging by the look of it. So yeah, um, once again, you just install, let it do its thing, and that's them actually installed on your keyboard. You don't need to do anything else. Sorry about that. Uh, sometimes the, the software can be slightly buggy, um, although it's not usually a problem. Now uh, yeah, you see start program in background and run program on uh, Windows startup. That's fine. But um, here show the display manager on the LCD foreground. Every time you start the computer, um, if this is selected, um, if is if this, yeah, sorry, if this is selected. This um, it will actually put that to the front on your um, LCD screen, so it can be annoying in that manner because I prefer usually to have the clock on, and um, this will uh, force open uh, in the foreground all the time. Uh, otherwise, of course, you've got your updates, uh, report, um, uh, report bugs, and so on. So just switch back over to my handheld cam, and we'll finish this video off. So there we're on the um, keyboard um, little menu. Um, just select FileNet. So wait for the camera to readjust its focus. So there you've got Skype, you've got active calls, which there isn't any. You call your friends from it, so on and so forth. 
Um, sorry, where's the back one? There it is. Um, so you can do a few things with it, sort of thing. I find this uh, particularly useful if you're um, in a gaming session and you get a, a, a call from your friend, sort of thing, to do like a video recording. Um, more good, uh, menu, sorry. Um, then you've got like the colour factory. This can change the colour of your keyboard um, and add ambient lighting and so on. Um, but this is the one that you want the most. Um, if I just start some music up quick. You see, it just does the uh, usual keyboard lighting. Uh, if I just go and close my bind quick, quick, quickly, I'll be right back with you a bit of better lighting for it. Uh, you do get like a graphic equalizer as well. And Uh, this one's a bit more of a gimmick, but I use it on the odd occasion if I'm only listening to music. So, um, uh, if I pause that, um, there is a slight little side note to note. Um, when you deactivate the um, keyboard, uh, the disco light, um, the, uh, key, the key switches to switch off uh, colours. You do have to change your colours up here. Um, so I prefer the purple lighting, uh, but uh, yeah, that's something that you have to do um, if you do use that. Otherwise, the lights just switch off and they won't come back on. Um, otherwise, so yeah, that's uh, just about it when it comes to the uh, free so um, softwares. Now, as I mentioned, um, I did add the uh, where, where is it gone? See the uh, memory clock here. Um, Focus. I'll do. Um, so yeah, um, it is basically like that um, other drop-down one. It's just that you have displayed exactly what you want to see, um, and you just push the up and down arrows there to scroll through what you want to see more than anything else. Handy if you're over, uh, if you're currently overclocking your computer and so on. Um, yeah, that's about it. Leave a like if you like this video. Um, dislike it if you dislike it. If you uh, did enjoy the video, please subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one in the future. Um, leave any comment sections in the comment section below. And this is Jock Boy P. Signing out.